Here's our February 16th, 2021 edition of Spy Movie News with updates on spy movies and TV series. Black Widow, Mission Impossible 7, No Time to Die, A Jinx Script, Tom Holland, Ray Fiennes, A Disney Studio Shuttered, The Gray Man, Jack Ryan, and more. Let's go! Hi, this is Dan Silvestri of SpyMovieNavigator.com with another very special edition of Cracking the Code of Spy Movies. Remember, all the links to the articles that will be mentioned here are on our website under episode notes. Let's get to it. Spy movies turned into TV series. Movies get made into series and series get made into movies. This time, the industry is retreading two movies from the 1990s and 2000s into a series. True Lies on CBS. The spy movie True Lies has been given the first pilot order of 2021-2022 for CBS. This is the second attempt to get a pilot made of a TV show based on the movie. Fox made a pilot commitment in 2017. The movie was a fun spy movie with Jamie Lee Curtis's character, Helen, finding out that her husband, Harry, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, was an international spy. You can read more on Variety.com. And Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie movie about assassins hired to kill each other, was released in 2005. It's been announced that Mr. and Mrs. Smith will be brought out as a 2022 series by New Regency and Amazon Prime Video. This series will have two of the hottest names in the industry starring and as executive producing the series. Donald Glover and Phoebe Waller-Bridge are both signed up in these roles. Mr. and Mrs. Smith was a fun movie, and with Donald and Phoebe involved, it's likely to be a fun series, too. You can read more about this in an article on Variety.com. Disney is still planning to release Black Widow theatrically. In our last Spy Movie News, we reported that Marvel CEO Herb Schreibner hinted that Black Widow could possibly debut on Disney+. Plus. Well, not so fast. According to an article on Variety.com, Disney CEO Bob Chapek, in discussing Black Widow, says, We are still intending it to be a theatrical release. However, he did not say if they are still planning the scheduled May 7th, 2021 release date. If it does release to theaters on May 7th, it would be the first tentpole movie to release this year. We're going to be watching very carefully the reopening of theaters and consumer sentiment on going back to theaters, he added. Mission Impossible 7. Cinema Blend says this is what we know about Mission Impossible 7. The current release date is set for November 19th, 2021. As we all know too well, (laughs) due to the pandemic, any movie release dates could change. Mission Impossible 8 will follow a year later with a targeted release date of November 4th, 2022. Christopher McQuarrie is directing both MI7 and MI8. Although in 2018... He was quoted as saying he'd rather have leprosy than direct MI7. So that was either a negotiating strategy or maybe it was like Daniel Craig's quote about doing another James Bond movie back in 2015 when he said, I'd rather slash my wrists than play James Bond again, as he was just tired when asked right after production wrapped. Of course, we know the cast. No surprise with most of the filming finished. It will likely get a PG-13 rating like the earlier Mission Impossible movies. More Mission Impossible stuff. Mission Impossible 7 is filming at Jakku from Star Wars. An article on CinemaBlend.com tells us that Mission Impossible 7 has filmed in the same United Arab Emirates desert that Star Wars The Force Awakens shot its scenes of Jakku. It has a picture of Simon Pegg, who plays Benji in the MI series, sandboarding on the desert. Simon appears as Unkar Plutt in The Force Awakens, so he has now filmed two movies in the same desert. Check it out, cinemablend.com. But wait, <laughs> well, Mission Impossible 7 was just filming in the United Arab Emirates, as we said, until February 12, 2021, when the UK issued new travel restrictions for people coming into the UK from 33 red listed countries, meaning that. Starting February 15th, anyone coming into the UK must quarantine for 10 days and pay £1,750 for hotel accommodations to quarantine them. The crew and cast basically demanded to be returned home before this went into effect, and they were returned home over last weekend. They expect, of course, because of this, more delays, but they will continue filming in England. Mission Impossible 7 is still scheduled for November 2021 release, as we said. James Bond. All right. No time to die. Well, 
Technology waits for no one. The Nokia product placements in No Time to Die are now old technology. In an article on gsmarina.com, they claim that the Nokia spots, now featuring the Nokia 8.35 G phone, must be reshot, as their 2019 phone is not looking so shiny and new in 2021. What about other sponsors like Adidas, Bollinger, Omega Watches, and so on? We'll see. These are unprecedented times and unheard of delays in releasing movies, so this different approach may be required. Makes sense. A Jinx script online after Die Another Day was released. There was supposedly a spin-off in development based on Halle Berry's character, Jinx. That movie was never released. But according to an article on CinemaBlend.com, a script attributed to Neil Purvis and Robert Wade has surfaced. The movie was reportedly going to tell the pre-Die Another Day backstory on Jinx. It supposedly was to have Michael Madsen as Damien Falco as her handler. That would have been interesting to see. Maybe it would have been better than our opinion of Die Another Day. The article mentions that there are now rumors of spin-offs of the characters Moneypenny and Nomi. Oh, wow. Ray Fiennes would like to continue as M after No Time to Die. Mike Rays has an article in cinemablend.com in which Ray Fine says, If anyone from Ian Films is listening, I'm very keen to continue training the new Bond. I love playing M, and I love being part of the franchise. Unquote. Given how well he plays the role, and with the history of the James Bond movies keeping the main supporting actors while the James Bond actor changes, hey, we hope Ian listens to him and keeps him. We like them. You can read this article at cinemablend.com. Tom Holland would love to play James Bond. 24-year-old Tom Holland talks about how he would love to play James Bond in an article on movieweb.com. The article, while talking about Holland's age, mentions that Henry Cavill, when 22, first auditioned for the role of Bond for Casino Royale, but lost to Daniel Craig. The article suggests Holland, being so young, may be better suited for the Kingsman series, which has used younger actors in its leading role. You can read the article at movieweb.com. We think, who knows, by the time the next Bond movie, After No Time to Die, finally releases, maybe Holland will be in his 30s. He's played Peter Parker in the Spider-Man movies and was the voice of Walter in the spy movie for kids, Spies in Disguise. So he may be too famous for Eon to consider him for the role, as some of their choices for Bond have been less famous actors in the past. Will future James Bond movies end up on a streaming service? We mentioned in our December 29, 2020 spy movie news that MGM might be looking to sell. So with the pandemic delay costing MGM around a million dollars a month in interest, it's rumored that MGM is looking for a buyer. A couple of articles have updated information on this. One at cinemablend.com discusses this rumor and points to an article on Forbes.com, which says that MGM wants nine to ten billion dollars, and Forbes doesn't think they will get it. MGM has tried selling itself twice before. However, the current rumors are that Amazon Studios might be interested, but who knows? Both articles point out that EM Productions can throw a wrench into any of this at any time. If a service like Amazon bought the franchise, it would want to be able to have an exclusive on all of the Eon Bond movies, past and future. Currently, multiple platforms have streaming rights to the various previous Bond movies. Hey, James Bond first edition books are for sale. Whoa! An article on movieweb.com points out that a collection of the first edition of James Bond books is selling for more than $600,000. Ten of the books have personal inscriptions from Ian Fleming. Even though we at Spy Movie Navigator are not in the market for these first editions, we did visit the reading room in the Lilly Library at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana, the U.S., to read their collection of the original Fleming manuscripts, including Fleming's handwritten notes, like Money Penny's name change. This was exciting. The reading room at the library is closed until the end of the year for renovations, and you need to make a reservation to view the manuscripts. However, if you have an opportunity in 2022, it is worth a visit for any James Bond fan. Yes, you won't own the books, but you won't have to shell out 600000 to read them either. There is no charge to read them in the reading room, and these are the original typewritten manuscripts that Fleming did. Yeah. We have a two-part podcast on our trip that you can find in your podcast apps or on our website. Studio behind Spies in the Skies is shuttered by Disney. Disney has decided to shut down the animation studio Blue Sky Studios. Blue Sky was responsible for the Ice Age series, the Peanuts movie, as well as one of our favorite spy movies for kids, Spies in Disguise, 
which was released after Disney bought the studio as part of its deal with 21st Century Fox in 2019. This news saddens us as we had hoped that Spies in Disguise could have been turned into a series of movies. The character of Walter and Lance could have evolved into a kind of Q and Bond type of relationship in future movies. The gimmick of Lance turning into a pigeon worked for Spies in Disguise, but wouldn't have to be repeated in future movies. However, Walter's gimmicks could be there to help Lance out. Oh well, another good idea shuddered as the original movie only grossed $171 million worldwide. Check it out, Hollywood Reporter. Com. Face Off 2? Paramount Pictures is bringing out a new Face Off and has signed Adam Wingard to direct and co-write the movie. In a February 11th article on MovieWeb.com, it is implied this will be a remake. The original 1997 movie starred John Travolta as an FBI agent and Nicolas Cage as the villain. It was an interesting, albeit improbable plot, but an entertaining movie with Travolta and especially Cage's performance. Not many people can play a lunatic better than Cage, in our opinion. Seeing Travolta playing the lunatic Cage's character was fun. However, in the February 12th article on MovieWeb.com, Wingard states that this won't be a reboot or a remake, but rather a sequel to the movie. Given how the 1997 face-off ended, it will be interesting to see how Wingard makes this a sequel. Check out the article at MovieWeb.com. The Gray Man. In our December 29th Spy Movie News, we talked about how COVID-19 was delaying production of the movie The Gray Man. In an article on MovieWeb.com, more information about the movie is coming to light. Production has been pushed to March. This movie supposedly has a $200 million budget and stars Chris Evans as the CIA agent Gray Man, who tracks Gentry, played by Ryan Gosling. Ana de Armas of No Time to Die and Knives Out fame has also joined the production. She starred in Knives Out with Chris Evans, who was the bad guy. The Gray Man, based on the novel by Mark Graney, is being directed by Joe and Anthony Russo. Joe Russo says this is being conceived as a series of films, and again, potentially branching out, we could follow other characters. But we're not going to answer every question in the movie. The Russos call this a modern interpretation of a spy thriller inspired by the Bond franchise. Wow. You can read the full article at movieweb.com. Who owns Jack Ryan? An article on hollywoodreporter.com discusses a judge's dilemma trying to untangle the mess of who owns the rights to the Jack Ryan character that was created by Tom Clancy. Instead of the judge deciding, this will either go to trial or be settled. The judge says that a reasonable jury could differ on what the evidence suggests. However, as the article puts it, a dispute with the publisher, a divorce, a death, a copyright termination, all contribute to the problem. We'll be watching this one as it is a legal nightmare based on the history of agreements and even the rights to the character that are being challenged by Clancy's ex-wife, Wanda King. You can read the whole article at HollywoodReporter.com. Five Eyes. In a Deadline.com piece, Hugh Grant, who we reported in the last Spy Movie News, was more than likely joining the Five Eyes team speaks here of his role in The Undoing and his respect for Guy Ritchie, who was directing Five Eyes. He said, he changes the titles of his films every Tuesday, but for the moment it's called that, Grant said, adding that his role will be quite different from the last Ritchie film he did, The Gentleman. Well, we kind of think it's not going to be called Five Eyes based on some of the other articles that are out. All right. That wraps up our Spy Movie News for February 16, 2021. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter at Spy Navigator, and Instagram, too. Subscribe right now to our Cracking the Code of Spy Movie show on your favorite podcast app. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it.